Story time. So when I was like seven or eight, I used to always steal my mum's makeup. She would get so mad because I would legit steal it and not return it. So when she'd be looking for it, I would hide it just so she couldn't take it off of me. But she would soon find it stuffed in like this teddy bear that I had and it had a little zip in it so you could hide things in there. Concealers, mascaras, and I even stole her skincare. I now understand the feeling of losing your favourite skincare because what you find works, works and nothing replaces that. But at the time, I had no idea and she would get so mad at me. So soon when I got a job i started by my own makeup but even then not only did now my mom get mad at me for taking her makeup she hated me buying it so she would legit throw it away she did not want me to wear it at all but these makeup products were my genuine favorite although i do believe they would break me out and my skin would always look so dry and dull and it's because i didn't know how to use my skincare properly so one day i was walking down the street wondering how to get my glow back on wait i'm running out of time go to part two This is part two on how my mum would legit throw away my makeup and my skincare. So like I was saying, not only did my mum hate me stealing her skincare and makeup, but she also hated me wearing it. And I never understood how to actually look after my skin either, so I'd get the most clogged up pores. And one day I was walking down the street wondering how to get my glow back on because my skin looks so crusty and dry. And then I discovered how to use my skincare. Let me tell you now double cleansing your skin and applying a serum before you apply your moisturizer gives you that glow that your skin needs. I'm now 19 and I understand the importance now and investing into your skincare matters. So not only now do I understand why my mum would get so mad at me for stealing her products, but it also taught me the importance of looking after your skin and deep cleaning your skin. So I honestly think she didn't like me wearing it because she knew it would ruin my skin if I did not use it properly. And you honestly need to find the right products for you. So don't lose your glow, use your skincare. So maybe my mum was right. It taught me a lesson to say the least. Story time about how my best friend made my whole school hate me. So a little background information. I was 13 and in eighth grade. And so was my best friend who we are going to call Layla. And we met at a birthday party of a mutual friend during that summer. And all three of us started to hang out every day. And then when school started back up, the trio fell apart. Because our other friend Alice went to a different school, so she couldn't really hang out with us as much. When we first started school, there was this boy that I met, and I really liked him. And we started dating. But Layla and I had our own little friend group. There were five of us. Then there was this girl named Ivy. She had four people in her group. And our friend groups did not like each other at all. There was maybe one person from both groups that hung out with the other group. But that was it. And the only reason why none of us were friends was because the main girls, like the leaders of the group, used to be best friends. But then Ivy went behind Layla's back and started talking to this boy that Layla liked. And that's literally why they're not friends anymore. Well, all of us in the friend group were friends, but I was Layla's best friend. Like for part two. Part two about how my best friend made my whole school hate me. So like I said, we were all friends in the group, but I was Layla's best friend. So her and I would pretty much boss everybody else around. But one day Layla tells one of our friends Nova to go and listen to what Ivy and her friends were talking about during lunch. Because Nova had friends who sat at the same lunch tables as them. Well, I guess Ivy was talking about how she was going to try to talk to every guy that Layla talked to just to make her mad. And that started a whole war. Layla and I have a sleepover that same night and she's like, we should make an Instagram account and expose her. Now, Ivy was notorious for sending out explicit pictures to guys. Like, even if she didn't know them, she loved the attention from guys. So Layla told me that we were going to make a fake Snapchat account and try to get her to send pictures. I'm not going to lie, it was kind of sad. She literally sent them within five minutes of Layla texting her pretending to be some guy. Guy. After that, we both made Instagram accounts that were named Exposing Ivy or something along those lines. And we made two accounts just so that way, if one got taken down, hopefully the other one would stay up. We posted the pictures on there and a lot of people saw them, like for part three. Part three about how my best friend made my entire school hate me. So like I said, Ivy sent the pictures and everybody saw them. And I'm talking even the people in high school. The next day, Ivy and Layla are in the same science class together. And none of their friends were there that day, so they ended up working on a group assignment together. And just like that, they were best friends again. Well, I get thrown under the bus, the teachers come and pull me out of my class, and they search my phone, and they find the Instagram account on my phone. Then when I told them it was also on Layla's phone, they went on her phone, and they didn't find anything, of course. I get suspended, and Layla and Ivy tell everybody that I was the one who made the fake Snapchat account and the Instagram accounts. And the whole week that I was suspended, I was getting messages from a lot of people that I went to school with and people that I didn't even know from high school. I was getting tagged and stuff on Instagram of people saying how much of a weirdo I am. Well, a few days into my suspension, Layla and Ivy talked my boyfriend into breaking up with me. They faked text messages between each other and made it look like I was talking to another guy. And then they faked another conversation between Layla and I. Life for part four. 
Part four about how my best friend made my entire school hate me. So like I said, Layla and Ivy talked my boyfriend into breaking up with me the week that I was suspended. They showed him fake text messages between me and some guy that doesn't even exist. And then they also faked a conversation between Layla and I, and it's me saying, OMG, this guy's so hot, I'm gonna leave my boyfriend for him. Then I was getting called a cheater, and when I went back to school the next week on Monday, it was terrible. People would whisper and laugh at me when I was walking in the hallway. I would be in the bathroom, and there would be girls talking about how weird and disgusting I was loud enough so I could hear them. Every lunch table that I sat at, Layla and Ivy would sit at the other end, with all their friends and just talk about me the entire time. Well, after this situation, I finally decided that I was going to do online school for the next two months and then hopefully have a fresh start in high school. All the girls and I were changing in the locker room and we went to gym class. Ivy asked if she could go to the bathroom, which of course was in the locker room. After gym class, I get changed in my clothes. And all the girls start laughing at me when my teacher says, there's a hole in the back of your pants. And yes, I did try telling my teachers about this stuff that was going on. As we all should know by now, schools are notorious for not doing shit to help students that are being bullied. My ex-boyfriend is threatening to expose our SEX tape if I don't get back with him. Disclaimer is not my story time. If send me on Instagram. I broke up with my ex three months ago, and it's become my personal nightmare. We actually only dated for six months on and off. At the time, I didn't know it, but he was definitely love bombing me from the beginning. At the time, I didn't even know what that was. Not until I started watching TikTok. We met at a bar, which is the worst place to meet a guy, by the way. He was all over me the first night he met me. He was trying to kiss my neck, and he even tried to grab my butt. I told him he needed to calm down, and he did. The following week, he managed to get a hold of my friend on Instagram, and he convinced my friend to give him my number. And my stupid-ass friend gave it to him. He was extremely manipulative, too. I later found out that my friend had a crush on him, so she was just trying to give him my number so she had an excuse to talk to him. Once this man got my number, it was a constant barrage of text messages. He would text me every single morning. He would send me selfies and all of this without my permission. I've only dated broke guys in the past, and my ex has a lot of money. So I decided to go out with him just to get a free dinner. Biggest mistake of my life. He forced a kiss on me on our first date. Part two is up. He actually forced me to kiss him on our first date. Story time about how my ex is threatening to expose our SEX tape if I don't get back with him. Disclaimer is not my story time instead of my Instagram. After he forced me to kiss him, I slapped him and he liked it. He actually said, I like that. I know this sounds terrible, but I kind of liked it. So then I went on a second date with him. He was really quick to do the dirty. He would always be grabbing or touching me. Anytime we were alone, even if it was for five seconds, this man would just pounce on me. He was literally and utterly obsessed with SEX. Don't get me wrong, it definitely was overwhelming, but I had never been with somebody who was so passionate. But then came the jealousy. He was constantly worried about who I was with. He was always showing up to places where I told him I'd be. Even if I was having dinner with friends, this man would show up. He would show up uninvited to my house. Before I knew it, five months had passed. This is when my parents started trying to convince me to break up with him. They hated that he always came around to the house even when we were all having dinner. He would just show up and sit down with us. My father especially hated him. He would also grab me in front of my parents and try to do stuff. Part three is up. In front of my parents, he would always try to kiss me and touch me. My father hated this guy. Story time about how my ex is threatening to expose our SEX tape if I don't get back with him. One night, I go over to his apartment, which he lives in a penthouse, and he tells me that he has something fun planned for us. I went into his bedroom, and he had this whole setup. Cameras, chains tied to the bed, handcuffs. It was like 365 days in there for 50 shades of gray. This man knew how to get me to do whatever he wanted. He started kissing my neck, and we started doing it. I knew the camera was there, but it didn't bother me. I never thought that he would ever try to use it against me. Fast forward three weeks later, I break up with him. He decides to start stalking me and then sends me the video. He told me he'd give it to me if I went to his apartment. I go to his apartment and he basically attacks me. He pushes me down on the couch and tries to do it with me. Then he told me that if I didn't get back with him, he'd expose me. I got back with him. He's on his best behavior. What should I do? Update on how my boyfriend is threatening to expose our SEX tape if I don't get back with him. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. I repeat, this is not my story time. Like I said in part three, he's on his best behavior and it's been two weeks now. I'm constantly being told by him that he's never going to release the tape as long as I stay with him. Now he's acting like the best boyfriend ever. He's treating my parents with respect. He's even given me money to give my parents. You guys won't believe what he did. The day I took him back after he threatened me, I asked for permission to come to my house and have dinner with my parents. Like I said before, he wasn't asking for permission to show up at my house. That's when he tells my parents that he wants to take care of us meaning he wants to give us an allowance immediately my parents were happy i thought they were gonna say no and my dad was like absolutely we love you we accept you and now my parents are pressuring me to stay with him because he's giving them money he's giving my dad twenty five hundred dollars a month which is enough to cover the mortgage payment my parents don't know about the sex tape and i don't know if i should tell them part five is up my boyfriend is threatening to expose our SEX tape if I don't stay with him. This is not my story time. I repeat, this is not my story time. Now that he's giving my parents money, of course my parents want me to stay with him. This just goes from bad to worse. I actually started falling in love with him again because he's been behaving so good. We've been doing it like crazy and he's always with me. Even if I'm working in my apartment, he'll just come over and make me dinner or he'll do my laundry, something he never used to do. Two nights ago, I asked him why he was still threatening me with the SEX tape. That's when he told me that he had a fear of losing me. I explained to him that he'll never lose me because we have a great relationship. That's 
that's when he looks at me and says, as soon as I delete that video, you'll leave me. And he grabbed me by the neck. Part six is up. My boyfriend is threatening to expose our SEX tape if I don't stay with him. Disclaimer is not my story time. I repeat, this is not my story time. When he grabbed me by the neck and told me that I belonged to him and that nobody else could ever touch me ever again. I told him that I didn't want anyone else. Once he fell asleep, I took your guys' advice. I looked for the tape and I finally found it. He put it in a safe and he forgot that he told me the code. I immediately left his apartment and went straight home. I went to the cops the next morning and they told me that the only way that I could prove that he was threatening me was if I had a text message or a recording. That they can't just go arrest him because he told me. Here's where you guys are going to get mad at me i didn't break up with him i told him that i would keep the tape and surprisingly he accepted but he doesn't know that i went to the police my parents still don't know still extremely possessive and jealous and is constantly all over me but i guess i kind of like that as long as he doesn't go back to being crazy now i'm just afraid that he'll try to record us again or that he has a copy oh my god do you guys think he has a copy he also bought me a new car two days ago what should i do Story time on how I take showers with my dad when my mom's not home. Okay, so boom, let's jump right into it. So I'm grown, 16 years old to be exact, and I'm a woman. My dad is 38 and my mom is 50, and to be honest, she works a lot. So I'm usually home alone with my dad. Well, one day I was washing my hair and I needed to get my back washed, you know? Because like, I always struggle washing my back myself. So I called my dad and he came. With my back turned, I asked him to wash my back and he laughed. But he sure did it. We then looked into each other's eyes and both smiled and laughed again. One thing led to another and I turned around to expose my whole self to my dad and told him to come in with me. And guess what? He undressed himself, came in, and we had fun. If you know what I mean. Full on makeout session is how it started. So now me and my dad's routine is to shower together when my mom's at work and we have lots of fun. But one day our fun was ended. When all I seen was my mom opening the bathroom door and seeing my dad and I kissing. And obviously naked. Not long after that, my dad was heading to jail and my mom is putting me up for adoption. Now I'm living with a friend and have no family, so no more fun for me. Don't take showers, guys. This is the story time of the time I almost cut my mother off, like cut her ass off. Kidding, I would never cut my mom off, but this is the story time of the time she pissed me off more than she's ever pissed me off in my whole life. Like I really wanted to whoop her ass. For reference, me and my mom and my sister grew up like she was a single mom and we were poor, right? We always lived in apartments or townhouses, like we'd never owned a house. So at a young age, I realized how poor we were and it really made me frustrated because I saw like how other kids lived and it made me sad because I watched how hard my mom worked. It just, I realized it really early on. I'm like two seconds away from going back to the green headband because I just can't take my hair sticking to my face. It really didn't help that my mom had two baby daddies that didn't send child support. So we were just kind of like poor. <laughs> Anyways, when I was younger, I would always do scratch off tickets. Like my mom would always buy the lucky sevens and I would just do them and be hoping that I'd win a million dollars and it never really happened. We're very much a scratch off ticket type of family. Like one time my mom won $10,000 from a scratch off when she was really young. So like we were just a scratch off family, you know? Day, my mom decided to buy an actual lottery ticket instead of a scratch off and so she came home like did her little thing put the numbers down and she calls me downstairs and she's like i want you to check my scratch off for me like i want you to see like the tv will say what the numbers actually are and i want you to see like if they are right because i want to see if we won the lottery this was the year that the lottery was like 10 million dollars right like an absurd amount of money an absurd amount of money. I run my little red ass down the stairs and I'm like, oh, I'm gonna check the lottery numbers. Like, what if we win the lottery? Yay, I love scratch offs. Mm. <laughs> Take the ticket and I'm watching the little balls roll into the thing, telling us what numbers are the lottery winners. And one after the other, they're lining up. And they're starting to line up and I'm like, holy shit, like we just won, we're about to win the fucking lottery. One thing about me, I can't take a prank. I'm not a prank taker. Like if you do a prank on me, I'm a terrible sport. I will pull a prank on you though, but I'm a terrible sport. I don't know what it is. I just, have, I'm very emotional. I'm just an awful sport. Like do not pull a fucking prank on me. And then obviously, all of the numbers line up and I start screaming, running around the house. Holy fuck, we just won the lottery. Cry I'm sobbing my eyes out, so excited. Imagine that. Imagine that. A little girl so excited she just won the lottery so that her mommy doesn't have to work anymore. <laughs> About 10 minutes after my literal crazy screaming around the house, yay, we can buy a house rampage, my sister and my mother look at me. Oh, I can still feel it. And my sister and my mother look at me and they say, we already knew the lottery numbers. We wrote down the winner so that we could prank you and make you think we won the lottery. I just about lit our 
our house on fire. I swear to God. I actually don't think I've ever been that angry in my life. I literally screamed at them and started sobbing and ran up to my room. And I don't think I talked to them for the rest of the day. And they'd never seen me that angry before. And my sister still talks about it. She actually commented it on my video the other day, which reminded me of it. Yeah, don't ever fucking prank me because I'm a terrible sport and I will cry and scream and never talk to you again.